self-locking, interlocking, and mutual locking. These are three essential control wiring schemes used in countless automation circuits. Self-locking, also known as self-holding or latching, is to keep a contactor energized after a momentary start signal is released. When the power is on, press the start button SP2. The KM coil energizes. This closes KM's normally open contacts, which are wired in parallel with the start button, creating a holding path that keeps KM energized even after SB2 is released. Next, interlocking. This enforces a sequence, ensuring one device must be on before another can start. It requires wiring a normally open contact from one contactor, KM1, into the other's KM2 coil circuit. With power on, pressing SB3 does nothing for KM2. But once you press SB2, KM1 energizes, closing its normally open contact. KM1 becomes self-locked even after SB2 is released. Now pressing SB3 allows KM2 to start. This means KM2 can only start after KM1 is activated. That's the principle of interlocking. Finally, mutual locking. This is the guardian of safety, ensuring two devices can never run at the same time. To achieve this, each contactor's coil circuit must have a normally closed contact from the other. When power is on, pressing SB2 energizes KM1 and locks it in. Its normally open contact closes, and its normally closed contact opens, cutting KM2's control path. Now, even if you press SB3, KM2 cannot be energized. Likewise, when KM2 is on, KM1 can't start. It's a classic one or the other mechanism, ensuring only one contactor operates at a time. Mastered the theory? Now get the parts. For reliable contactors, push buttons, and circuit breakers to build these circuits, visit ATO.com, a one-stop shop that covers all your industrial automation needs.